Hello class. So this is our review with bipolar junction transistors. So, yeah. so let us first define <clears throat> what a transistor is. So a transistor, so it is a three-layer semiconductor device consisting of either two n-type <clears throat> and one p-type materials of material or layers of material or two p-type and one n-type layer of material. So, ang sabi dito, <clears throat> ang transistor daw natin, it's a three-layer semiconductor device that is as opposed to the diodes, na ang diodes sa alam natin, they are just two-layer devices. Now, itong <clears throat> transistor natin, pwede din daw na it is composed of two n-type and one, one p-type, sinasandwich natin yung p-type pale. Or pwede naman na dalawang p-type, tas may sinasandwich tayo na isang n-type, layer of material. So, ang kanyang purpose is <clears throat> this is a device that is used or a component that, it, that is used to amplify and switch electronic signals. So, yung dalawang main na function natin dito is amplify and switch. <clears throat> so, konting history lang, no? Pero since review lang naman to, um, ano na lang natin, mabilisan lang. December 23, 1947, Walter Bratain, John Bardeen, and William Shockley so developed the first transistor. That is the point contact transistor. So before transistors, ang ginagamit natin for switching is mga vacuum tubes. Ito yung mga nag-invento ng mga yun. This is in Bell Laboratories. And this is the replica of the first transistor. Now, ang tanong dyan is bakit nga ba sobrang importante ng mga transistors? Kung maalala nyo sa mga previous na lessons nyo with your computer subjects, transistor is the third generation of technology for computing, for computers. So, <clears throat> before kasi ang ginagamit natin, uh, mga vacuum tubes. And yung mga vacuum tubes na to, they are large consumption sila ng energy. Also, malalaki sila. Para silang mga malalaking bumbilya ba? So, tapos ang function niya is ginagamit natin siya as parang switch, electronic switch. Now, the invention of transistor revolutionized computer design. And now, a modern microprocessor typically contains hundreds of transistors or millions of transistors in a single silicon chip. Yung mga vacuum tubes, hindi natin pwedeng pagkasahin yan sa mga silicon chip. Now, ang tanong, sir, eh bakit ba importante yung ano na yan, vacuum tubes in the first place? Bakit kailangan natin ng transistors para palitan siya? So, yung vacuum tubes kasi class, ginagamit natin siya sa switch. And papunta tayo ng digital age, di ba? So, kapag digital era na yung pinag-uusapan, the nature of digital information, it is composed of zeros and ones. Binary tayo. So, kung zeros and ones yung ginagamit natin, Kailangan na natin ngayon ng device na makakapagbigay sa atin ng two states, either zero or one, either on or off. Nakuha ba? So, very important sa atin during that time yung mga vacuum tubes kasi sila yung nagpo-provide ng, ng values na yon na zero at saka ng one, ng on and off na state. Which ngayon, kayang-kaya siyang gawin ng mga transistor natin. Tapos, ang maganda ba sa transistors natin, maliit siya, maliit yung size niya. So, hindi natin kailangan ng malaking space and pwede natin siyang pagkasahin sa isang silicon chip lang. So, yun yung main advantage class ng transistors. So, it is regarded as one of the um, best inventions of the 19th century. Ngayon. So, ang pag-aaralan natin for this uh, video is bipolar junction transistor or commonly known as BJT. So, yung pare naman yon three-layer semiconductor device. But ang isang specific na characteristic niya is that it is a current control device. In short, you use current para makontrol yung pag-on and pag-off nitong transistor natin. Pati yung pag-set natin ng kanyang amplification, we use current to do that. So, the operation of BJT com comprises both majority and minority carriers. Thus, the term bipolar. So, later on, in the figure, I can show you na both the minority and majority carriers ay ginagamit natin para sa operation ng isang BJT. 
So, ito yung transistor uh, construction natin. PNP or NPN. So, meron siyang tatlong terminals. The collector, the base, and the emitter. Yung base natin, lagi yan na sa gitna. <coughs> Kung ano yung nakasandwich na material, that is our base. Now, ang symbol naman natin for transistor is ganito. Schematic symbol. So, magkaiba yan. PNP tsaka NPN. Depende sa material. So, ito PNP. This is NPN. So, for the PNP, yung symbol niya is ganito. Ang mnemonics namin dyan, di ba PNP? Tapos yung arrow natin is going in. So, ang tawag namin dyan, or ang easy way to remember that is pasok na pasok. Kasi papasok siya. So, kung alin yung may arrow, yun yung emitter. Next, pag NPN naman, palabas na. So, kung palabas na yung arrow, ibig sabihin nun, napasok na. So, yun naman yung mnemonics na ginagamit natin for this one. Again, the three terminals are the emitter, base, and the collector. So, the emitter layer, it is heavily doped. The base, lightly doped. And the collector, only lightly doped. Now, remember class that the heavier a layer is doped, the higher the amount of impurities resulting to higher conductivity. Remember our definition of semiconductor. Ito ay mga um, pure na material kung saan... It's a, it's neither an inductor. Ah, it's neither an ah it 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 ano ano pala? Para siyang may characteristics ng isang conductor or ng isang insulator. So on itself, insulator siya. Pero kapag nag-add tayo ng certain impurities, kaya nating i-manipulate yung electrical characteristics niya para maging conductor siya. And yung ginagawa natin na process na yon is yun nga doping. Nag-add tayo ng impurities. So the more impurities that we add, then the, ano rin, the higher the conductivity then So, big sabihin, if the emitter layer is heavily doped, mataas yung conductivity niyan. Marami siyang mga carriers. Kasi, di ba, remember then sa process ng doping, nag a tayo ng trivalent, either trivalent or pentavalent impurities, and that results into, <clears throat> into carriers, either holes or excess electrons. So, the more material, the heavier the doping, the more um, carriers din yung nalalagay. The more holes or the more electrons yung nalalagay din doon sa material natin. And since yung base natin and collector are only lightly doped, hindi sila ganun ka-conductive. So kapag dumaan dyan ang kuryente, kumbaga hindi ganun kalakas yung dumadaan na kuryente dyan. So also, the base layer is the thinnest. Typically, just 1 out of 150 ng whole weight ng transistor. So, yung buong transistor, only 1 unit of that out of 150, yun lang yung base. So, sobrang nipis lang niya. And the arrow in the symbol defines the direction of the emitter current. So, aside from, um, kumbaga, diba, ginagamit natin yung arrow para ma-determine nasan yung emitter. So, it also defines yung direction ng emitter current natin. So, kung mapapansin natin dito sa figure, the emitter current is going here, palabas dito. So, dito pa lang mapapansin natin that the emitter current is the largest. Kasi, pag pumasok dito yung kuryente, KCL lang, mahati dito, meron pupunta sa base, meron pupunta sa collector. So, ito yung pinakamalaki. And combination ng base and collector current is our emitter current. Ganun din dito, palabas na yung kuryente. So, yung combination ng collector and base, base currents equal yun sa emitter current natin. And that is its direction naman ng flow. Now, for transistor operation, ang para madali natin maintindihan, himayin natin. So, wag muna natin ibayas ng buo yung transistor natin. Let us first um, look at the behavior kapag dalawang layer muna yung i-consider natin. So, for this one, between the emitter and the base, ang ginawa natin class is, pinorward bias natin siya. So, tandaan, ito ay PN junction lang din, similar to a diode. Um, dinagdagan lang natin ng isa pang layer. But, if we are just to consider the first two layers, layer nitong emitter, tapos yung layer na nakakabit sa base, this is as simple as a diode lang. And kapag ang diode, naka-forward bias, ano yung mangyayari? 
pag nag-forward bias tayo, yung depletion region natin dito sa point na to, ninipes. At kapag nabipes siya, magkakaroon tayo ng flow ng carriers dito. So, we will have a flow of majority carriers. Ito yon. Next, ang gawin naman natin for the base to collector, uh, or collector to base, na terminal natin, reverse bias natin siya. So, by the way, hindi ko pala nasabi, this is a PNP transistor. So, PNP. So, kung P to, P din to, naka-forward bias tayo. N to, N to. So, dito naman, PNP pa din. So, this is N-type. And yung N-type, nakakonect sa positive terminal ng baterya natin. So, therefore, this is reverse bias. So, alam naman natin sa operation ng diode, nakapag-reverse bias ang PN junction, kakapal yung depletion region natin. So, walang flow ng current. However, meron tayong tinatawag na reverse saturation current. So, magkakaroon pa rin ng flow ng minority carriers. So, this is NP. So, ang minority carriers nitong N sa base ay positive na mga holes. So, magkakaroon tayo ng flow ng current papunta dito, pero although maliit lang. So, dito, may flow ng holes. Majority carriers nitong P, area, P type na material na to tumagos papunta dito. And then, we will have minority carriers. Yun lang yung makakalusot dito sa depletion region na to Ito rin yung explanation ko kanina. So, mangyari class, kung pag sasamahin na natin siya, ito naka-forward bias, ito ay naka-reverse bias, ang mangyayari class, merong majority carriers on this direction, minority carriers in this direction, magkocombine yung magnitude nila. So, yun class yung mangyayari. And then, the base, being lightly doped, will only allow a small base current IB to pass. So, naalala natin, ang description natin for the base terminal or the base uh, layer ay lightly doped lang siya. Kung lightly doped lang siya, di syempre, may magpo-flow pa rin na kuryente sa kanya, kaso konti lang. So, yung konti na kuryente na yun, dahil konti lang din yung uh, impurities na nakalagay sa kanya, ito yun. That is our IB. So, kung, kung maliit lang yung IB, yung IE natin, tsaka yung IC, halos parehas lang sila ng value. So, this is the flow of majority and minority carriers in a PNP transistor. Now, if, if we apply Kirchhoff's current law, we obtain, we know that our emitter current, IE, is equal to the sum of these two. So, the collector current comprises of two components, the majority carrier flow and the minority carrier flow, also known as the leakage current. <clears throat> yun yung minority, ano ah, yun yung minority uh, carrier flow, uh, ang tawag doon is the leakage current. So, the collector current, therefore, is determined by yung majority na IC plus I see on a minority. This is the um, current ng mga majority carriers and this is the current of the minority carriers. So, ayan, balikan natin dito. Oh. So, yung IC natin, that is the total of the minority carriers plus the majority carriers na makakalusot dito. Now, we have two... Uh, transistor characteristic curves. So, review ko lang, when we say characteristic curves, this is um, the plot or the curve kung saan nag-work yung transistor natin. Depende sa different na values na ilalagay natin. So, meron din naman ito yung diode. So, familiar naman siguro kayo. Ito yung ibang diode. Um, zero siya or, or ideally, approximately zero yung value. Tapos, kapag na-reach niya na yung 0.7, biglang tataas na yung um, kuryente natin. That is its characteristic curve. Now, for transistors, meron din tayo. For, ang una natin is the input characteristic curve. That is the plot of the input current versus the output, ay the input voltage at various levels of V out. So, ibig sabihin nito, various levels of V out, we will have multiple curves. Kasi, sa bawat curve na yun, meron tayong I in versus V in. Next, 
output characteristic curve naman, ito yung mas madalas natin gagamitin. Or mas madalas na ginagamit for computation. It is the plot of I out versus V out at various uh, values of I in regardless of its configuration. So, multiple din to. Halimbawa, meron akong I in na uh, ang value ko ay 20 micro amperes. For that value of 20 micro amperes, ano yung I out versus V out ko? So, we will be seeing multiple curves din dito. Now, ang isang hahanapin natin sa characteristic curve is what we call as the quiescent point or the Q point or the operating point. So, it is the area of current or voltage with the maximum limits for the particular device. So, dito sa, uh, sa point na to, kumbaga dito tayo maglalaro doon sa device natin. So, sa point na to, uh, ang current mo ganito, ang voltage mo ganito, dito ka nag-work. So, you need this amount of voltage para maka-work maka at this certain point if you want an uh, output of ganito or input of ganyan. So, yun yung Q point natin. Ayan. So, this is the input characteristic curve. Sabi sa inyo, multiple curves yung makikita natin. We have 1, 2, 3. Examples lang to. This is the value of V out in different levels. Our y-axis is our input current. X-axis is the input voltage. So, ang nangyayari daw dito, and, um, if we have current, or if we have an input voltage of less than around 0 0.7, halos 0 yung output natin. But habang nag-change yung ano natin, nag-change or tumataas na sa 0 0.7, yung ating input voltage, nagkakaroon na tayo ng surge of current. Now, yung surge of current natin, depende pa kung alin dito sa mga to sa output voltage mo. Let's say, ang output voltage mo mataas, so asan dyan yung curve na yun? Now, next naman is the transistor output characteristic curve. Ito naman yun yung nasa right. Um, this is multiple curves again at different levels of our input current. So, halimbawa, at input current number 1, at uh, number or, or at input current letter A na lang para hindi nakakalito. Halimbawa ito yon letter A to. So, kapag letter A ang input current mo, dito lang babagsak yung input and output voltage mo. So, hindi pwede na bumagsak yan dito kasi ang input current mo hindi naman at wala naman sa curve na to eh. Ang input current mo nandito sa curve na to. So, ganun yung mangyayari. Now, in our output characteristic curve, we have three regions of operation. We have this one, the saturation region. Yung sabihin yan, class, kapag yung quiescent point mo nandito sa region na to, nasa saturation region ka. Kapag nandito sa kulay puti, nasa active region. Kapag nandito sa kulay itim sa ilalim, nasa cut off region ka naman. So, to be specific, explain ko isa-isa. Saturation region, nag-work as a switch yung device mo. So, anbawa, ang, ang nag-ray ka ng input current, ito yung input current mo, pasok sa curve na to. Tapos, andito pumasok yung, current, uh, yung output current mo at output voltage. Ibig sabihin, yung transistor mo, nag-work yan as a switch. Kapag ka naman nasa active region, mapadpad yung quiescent point mo or yung operating point mo, Bawa same if at um at if at input current letter A and dito sa point na to yung kuryente or yung operating point mo. Kung ganun yung case, nasa active na region siya. In sa active region class, this is where the process of amplification happens. So if you want to use your device as an amplifier, make sure na pag binayas mo siya sa active region siya mapupunta. In the cut-off region naman, oh, this is the region kung saan hindi nag-work as either, uh, neither as a switch or as a amplifier, yung, yung transistor mo. <clears throat> so, ito, this is a common figure ng isang uh, transistor. So, kung mapapansin natin, hindi pa natin alam agad-agad kung saan bang point mapupunta or kung saan point mapupunta yung transistor natin ay rather yung operating point natin 